right. Thanks, everyone, for joining us today. I'm really excited here today to have Sugu Planescale CTO for a chat. Um, I just want to thank him for taking out the time to join us today. Thank you. I'm yeah, excited, awesome. too. Yeah, um, we have some really interesting questions. You know, we're really excited to be here today at at Prisma Serverless Conference, where you know m more and more Prisma users are building in serverless environments. And in a serverless world, traditional database needs to scale differently. They need to be on you know rock solid infrastructure that so it can handle this scale in a serverless world. And a lot of people don't know that Planet Scale is built on top of an open source technology called Vitesse, and and it has scaled and. Incredibly. And so I want to learn more about the test. I want to learn why it scaled so well. And um, yeah. So first question, why did you build the test? Well, the year was, uh, this was 2010. And uh, I, if I remember correctly, we were at YouTube and uh, we were, uh, YouTube was, it was already pretty big. We were like uh, the number three site by Alexa ranking. It was Google, Facebook, and YouTube. But that wasn't only it. We were also growing really fast because we were actually catching up to uh, their level of traffic. So it was uh, massive traffic and massive growth. And uh, with that situation, uh, the problem was really, really acute with the database because there was just not enough amount of tooling that we could throw at the database to keep it uh, scaling. And that's when we decided, you know, this something has to be has to be done that allows us to leap ahead of uh, this back against our wall situation. And uh, uh, when we actually took time off and built a spreadsheet of all the problems we have solved today and all the problems that are going to come in the future, and uh, looking at that spreadsheet, we knew that if we really have to take care of all this, we had to build a separate piece of software that actually uh, put all these ideas together as as one product. That's kind of how Vitesse was born. Yeah, and were there any decisions why you picked, for example, MySQL and sharding um, to scale with Vitesse? Yeah, MySQL was pretty much a no-brainer at that time. This is, we are talking 2010. Uh, at that time, pretty much any sizable website, any webs anything that served huge traffic, uh, uh, was running MySQL. Facebook, there was Google Ads, uh, like, uh, and MySQL has remained uh, one of the most sc uh, easily scalable databases, like Uber, and you'll see that, like, even today, most of the big websites uh, still continue to use your, uh, MySQL. And us at YouTube, we were also already using MySQL, and uh, so it was more or less a, a no-brainer. I yeah. think uh, in today's world, uh, there's uh, Postgres, uh, which is kind of coming on board. But in reality, uh, if you ask me honestly, uh, one should not use, overuse the features that these databases give you uh, because uh, they actually lock you into that situation. And also, uh, it's better to solve some of these problems at the application level and minimize how much load you put on a database because if you did that, you can actually scale things better. Yeah, definitely. And so some people, we, we've said this word sharding before. Some people may have heard of this word sharding of when scaling a database. What is sharding, number one? And then why did you choose to use it to scale MySQL? So the way I would put it is I've, uh, like, we, uh, like our infra team has been through multiple um, scalability scenarios. The way I would summarize it is sharding is probably the only way to scale indefinitely. Uh, if you have massive scale and you have to keep on scaling, sharding, sharding is probably the, the, the best approach to use. Simply put, sharding means that you are distributing your data. You are basically splitting up your data and distributing it across machines. So which means that if your data grows, all you have to do is add more machines and distribute it further. And therefore, you pretty much allows you to keep on scaling uh, forever. Is that's the way I would describe charting at a at a very high level. There's a lot of nuances about uh, having to keep uh, group data that is related together, etc. But uh, those are uh, the details uh, involved when you make sharding decisions. 
Yeah, or, and also, you know, I know Mongo also has has chosen to go down the sharding path too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Mongo is uh, one of the leading examples of sharding. So, yeah. uh, and uh, it has definitely shown that you can scale forever if you use totally. sharding. Are there are there other scaling patterns that that y'all tested out or explored that that maybe don't work as well? Yeah, I mean, like people have done all kinds of other ways to scale things. Like the the one common uh, uh, solution that you hear about is uh, caching, right? If you yeah. uh, your database is not scaling, add a caching layer and boom, you suddenly like reach like 5x, it's 10x magic. Uh, scalability. But uh, those are like dangerous uh, solutions, like uh, especially caching, because the problem with caching, uh, one problem with caching is that if you saturate that, you are pretty much dead in the water. After that, there is no way to scale further. But there are bigger problems that you would face if you, like, in YouTube, we actually had caching. We, uh, uh, like, uh, I think we had a hit rate of, like, 95% or something. And any time we lost the cache, it was a panic moment. Because at a 95% cache, if you lost that, your database loads go, goes up by uh, by 20x and there's no way a database can handle that because we have already we scaled by taking load away from the database and the database load has grown so you cannot send this traffic back to the database and uh, recovering from such situations becomes very hard so overall uh, systems built like that don't handle uh, outages and incidents very well so that's one of the problems there's also like vertical scaling, you know, you can like keep on building bigger and bigger hardware. But uh, now now the fact that CPUs don't get any faster, the bigger hardware just gives you more CPUs. And uh, eventually uh, built-in bottlenecks in the software don't allow you to exploit all of the CPUs. So there are all kinds of problems and limitations that arise uh, if you adopted uh, other, uh, um, other ways to scale. Uh, another big caveat, though, with sharding is that you have to be uh, careful about making sure that uh, you keep things loosely coupled. You know that you don't you don't couple you you cannot scale a system where there is too much interdependency between data, uh, and uh, such systems don't magic won't magically scale. So you need to separate things out, keep them separate. Uh, and that way uh, you can keep on repeating this process of scaling. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So you say, we've said the word scaling a lot, you know, uh, when we talk about scale, what kind of scale was Vitesse being run at, at YouTube? Yeah, we actually, uh, uh, if you look at uh, the number that we launched at in 2010, 2011 at YouTube, it may look small. It was actually pretty big then. We we started out with like we had like 16 shards, you know. And uh, what, what, prog- when when you say 16 shards, what, explain uh, for the audience like what what does that really mean? That would be helpful too. So like when uh, when we distributed the data, we split it 16 ways. So we yeah. split it on 16 different boxes, and yeah. uh, so basically. One sixteenth of our user were were on one database, the other one sixteenth on another. So we had sixteen such databases. Okay. Yeah, and uh, so which means that uh, when a user came in and looked at their query, the queries just went to one shot. So that's kind of how we started. We probably were doing like two three hundred thousand uh, QPS. That actually grew by by over a mag, uh, order of magnitude over the last ten uh, ten years or so. Um, by the time I left, we were probably doing, we were doing millions of QPS. We were running on uh, tens of thousands of nodes. We were, uh, like when we launched, we were just two data centers. Uh, uh, by the time left, by I left, it was uh, around 20 data centers all around the world. Uh, and uh, uh, each, like each, uh, uh, primary had like seventy five replicas, so it was a, it was pretty enormous, massive. It's yeah, very massive. It was massive. Yeah, but yeah. The, the beauty was not the massiveness. The bigger beauty was the fact that the team that ran it was really really small. We were just like 10, 15 people running such a massive uh, setup, and uh, one person would go on on call, and they would have nothing to do. The only thing they would, their job was, if you have no pages, 
your job is to plan ahead, you know, make sure that uh, do you need, do you need to grow the disk space for this one? Do we need to plan another resharding? You know? So yeah. that's, the, so it was more of planning work that we were doing. We were not responding to that many outages. Yeah. So the test is now this default database for scale. This has been proven by, you know, it's deployed at Slack, uh, Roblox, Square, Etsy, uh, GitHub, JD.com. The list is endless. How do you feel knowing that this like tech that you've created powers so much of the internet today? It's it's somewhat humbling and uh, very exhilarating. It's uh, it's exciting to see such big companies you know rely on on this software. But what I am more excited about is this software uh, now through Planet Scale is available for the common engineer. Right? Like this huge power is now available for the common engineer. Just with yeah. a click of a button, you can yeah. now have a Vitesse cluster up, ready, uh, up and running for you. Yeah, I mean, I know when I was considering joining PlanetScale, it was very attractive to me from like a developer experience standpoint that I could create a database within seconds. And also though that it made it easier, I didn't have to make all these complicated decisions of how to deploy the database and how I was gonna get the like correct version of MySQL up and how I was gonna operate and maintain it over time. Um, you know, that was that was really interesting to me uh, coming from my development background, but also it made me feel like I could build more faster. Um, but you know, with this move to serverless and we're here at, at Prisma Serverless Conf, like why is it important to you that PlanetScale is serverless? Serverless actually is one of the most relevant pieces of advancement in technology the way I see it. The reason is because um, today uh, the software industry is extremely complicated with a really, really large number of deep stacks. You know? And it is actually not uh, fair to expect an engineer to learn all of these stacks I actually remember seeing um, a big argument in a forum where someone was saying, oh, if you don't know how to bring up a database and you're not worthy of being an engineer. And that's actually a totally unfair expectation of an engineer uh, today because today's engineers have to learn a large number of things just to be able to write what they need to write. Like there's a, there's a huge Ruby stack, there is a huge Tailwind stack, there's a huge React stack having to learn how to best use all those stacks. And then you cannot go and tell the engineer, now you have to learn how to bring up a database. You know? So um, I think in this type of environment, uh, another company taking over that complexity and solving it for you, where you just click a button and you have a database up and running for you. And that allows you to, like what you said just before, focus on the problem that you have to solve as a developer. Yeah, totally. And and along the line, so PlanScale, like we wanted to make it serverless to make this development work faster and 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 have developers need to not know one more thing. Why was it important though to pick Vitesse for serverless to you? Yeah, I mean the the the, the simplest reason is the fact that Vitesse uh, a huge amount of investment has gone into making Vitesse what it is today. I mean, yeah. if you want me to throw a number, it's probably in the hundreds of millions of dollars. You know, like uh, a, a company had to invest that kind of money. You know, like YouTube had to invest that kind of money into this project to be to be able to mature it to this extent. And this maturity uh, gives you all these powers of scalability, not just scalability, and also functionality. Um, yeah. And that is now available to you. Um, like today, like the, the feature set that we have in planet scale today doesn't even tap into like the pro barely taps into probably like 10% of what Vitesse can do. There's so many hidden gems and features that, that are inside Vitesse that, uh, we'll get to expose sooner or later. There's the messaging architecture. There's the V replication, uh, each like, uh, I, if I were to throw like uh, throw a simple example, Shlomi just recently, Shlomi is one of the uh, one of the developers uh, uh, on uh, in the MySQL world. He's also uh, part of Planet Scale. Just recently developed a feature where you can reverse schemas. You deploy a schema. There was a problem. You can immediately undo it. Right. So those kinds of features you can easily build with something like Vitesse. Yeah. 
Yeah, and kind of going off of that, you know, uh, get centric workflows. You know, that makes me think of revert. Basically, uh, reversing a scheme is kind of like reverting. Um, have basically changed how we build the web. You know, we have this idea that we can just fork something or branch something and have this different environment. You know, and I'm really excited here at at Prisma Serverless Conference because, you know, Prisma also has embraced this idea of writing database schema in this like declarative way that also makes it easier to be portable and we can share these schemas, we can um, make changes to these schemas and then merge them back. That's and, the way to go. That's, yeah. the way to go. That's the new way. But, <laughs> but, you know, historically, though, the database layer has been, you know, single branched and maybe we're talking to some long running server or, you know, a production environment, even not even a staging environment, you know. At PlanScope, we have this focus on branching and schema changes. Why was that an, an important first set of features to you? Yeah, this this I, I have to talk about uh, Sam Lambert, our CEO. Uh, when he came on board, uh, he he actually experienced this problem uh, when he was a DBA at GitHub. He found that the schema deployment is a nightmare. It's a nightmare for everyone. It's painful. And uh, by far, he basically said that if we solve the schema deployment problem, we will make databases approachable by any developer, right? That that was the problem he thought we needed to solve. And he knew exactly how it has to be solved because you need to be able to make this work along with the workflow that is common to what a developer does when they are developing their software, which means that developers create branches of their source code, you should also be able to branch your database schema. And then eventually you have to deploy your source code in a staging environment, which means that along with the schema deployment, we need a staging database, right? With your branched out schema and all of this should work, should work together naturally and beautifully. And you should be able to bring this up and down as many times as you like in an isolated fashion for yourself so that another developer's work doesn't affect yours. So all this flow has to work beautifully for this to be nice and easy. And that, I believe, is what Planet Scale has brought up for, yeah. uh, for the developers. Totally. Yeah, and it, I mean, I think the idea of schema changes, we're all scared to make them. I think some people had started moving to NoSQL because they kind of felt like that helped solve some of the problems because it's not requiring those schemas. Like, what what's your take on, you know, the good and bad uh, with using that kind yeah. of web. No NoSQL actually, uh, it is true. You don't need a schema for NoSQL, but uh, but you also uh, but at what cost, right? You do yeah. lose a huge amount of functionality if you go to NoSQL. Uh, there is there is a lot of power you can get from having a real database uh, with a real schema. And the way the way I would put it is, schemas are not the problem. The problem is the workflow that is involved in deploying the schema has not been worked out well, and we believe that we have nailed it at planet scale. So I feel like if that problem is solved, then actually using a database is a lot more beneficial than using uh, any key value store. Uh, like even adding a simple where clause to an SQL like leaps you ahead of the number of things you can do with your software. Yeah, totally. That's that's really interesting. Um, so last question I just wanted to ask, what is your advice for folks when they're scaling their tech stack today? I would say keep things simple. Keep things yep. as simple as possible because the simpler it is, the easier it is to keep scaling it because then it is easier to replicate what you have done and keep scaling it. Use SQL, but don't go overboard. Uh, SQL has offers a lot of powerful constructs do not use anything that is too complex. Stick to simple where clauses, stick to simple joins, simple uh, aggregations, and don't go anything else that uh, SQL offers because that will give you the best uh, scalability uh, that you that you can want. Yeah, that's that sounds like great advice. Yeah. I just want to thank you so much for taking the time to chat today. It's been really awesome. I learned a lot. Hopefully others did. And um, also want to thank Prisma for having us to be able to have this conversation today. And um, yeah, uh, feel free. We'll be around the conference if you have any questions and uh, love to hear your thoughts on what we talked about today. Bye. Thank you.